Welcome, bienvenidos. Today's core coffee chat on understanding the county budget is an opportunity to learn about something that affects all of us one way or the other. We hope today's presentations and the discussions and breakout sessions that we planned will help all of us gain a fuller understanding of the budget process and cycle, as well as opportunities to be more involved in shaping it. We have two guest presenters today, Susan Stafford and Marcus Pimentel, who Nicole Young will introduce a little later. And our chat today is co-sponsored by the Human Care Alliance and the Nonprofit Connection for Santa Cruz County. We thank them for bringing this important topic forward and for helping to get the word out about today's event. I'm Nicole Lezen, one of the local consultants, along with Nicole Young, who facilitates a countywide initiative called the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based, or CORE, Investments, which is a collective impact approach to achieving equitable health and well-being for all people in our county across their lifespan. And as you can hear, our core events are held bilingually in English with Spanish interpretation, thanks to our team members, Stella Lauerman, who will be providing live interpretation today, and Gisela Carrasco, who translates comments and questions in the chat and is translating right now. And again, thanks for joining, welcome. I'm gonna turn the mic over to Nicole Young as you're introducing yourselves in the chat and we'll do a quick overview of CORE before we get into the presentations. Go ahead, Nicole. Thanks. Uh, so CORE, hopefully you know by now, stands for the Collective of Results and Evidence-Based Investments. And we think of it as both a funding model and a movement to achieve equitable health and well-being in Santa Cruz County using a results-based collective impact approach that's responsive to community needs. And we always remind ourselves of the mission and vision that you see on the next slide, where we have intentionally and explicitly centered equity. And so that's a recurring theme for us in all of our core institute events uh, and anything, any discussions related to core. And when we say equitable health and well-being, we mean that across the lifespan for all people, uh, next slide, Nicole, uh, we want everyone to be able to experience these eight interdependent, interconnected core conditions for health and well-being so that we're at a place where people's opportunities and their life outcomes aren't predictable for better or for worse by their race, ethnicity, income le level, gender identity, sexual orientation, or any uh, number of uh, aspects of our social identities. And so we keep equity at the center of this diagram to illustrate that we know we have to continuously examine and address our individual, organizational, institutional, and systemic beliefs and practices and structures, um, because those are often the very things that perpetuate the inequities that we're trying to eliminate. And so when we think about what it takes to create the conditions for our equitable health and well-being, we know that the county's investments are an important part of that. They have a big influence on these conditions, uh, including how the county's budget aligns with their strategic and operational plans. And so we'll hear about that uh, in more depth in a little bit. Um, and just wanna say that events like today's coffee chat uh, are offered as part of what we call the Core Institute for Innovation and Impact or the Core Institute. We think of that as the learning arm of core investments where we offer a variety of training, tech, technical assistance, opportunities to have conversations like today's and learn uh, more in service of our collective impact work together. And we often uh, partner up with other groups and organizations to host these kinds of events. And so we're really thrilled to be uh, welcoming the Human Care Alliance and Nonprofit Connection Santa Cruz County as our co-sponsors today. Um, this is a topic in terms of understanding, you know, local government, how the budgeting process works, opportunities for advocacy. This is an idea that um, both the Human Care Alliance and Nonprofit Connection at various times have suggested as topics. And so we all kind of put our heads together and said, oh, let's, let's offer something together. It's a great use of all of our kind of roles and, and relationships and uh, networking. So I'm going to give a moment for um, either Julie or Leah from the Human Care Alliance to say a few words about what HCA is and, and what you do, and then we'll uh, give Rose a chance to do the same for Nonprofit Connection. Thank you, Nicole. Good morning, 
And thanks everyone for being here. I'm Julie Masasovic. I'm the Executive Director of Walnut Avenue Family and Women's Center. I'm also the co-chair of the Human Care Alliance. So the Human Care Alliance is a membership-based coalition of local nonprofit organizations that support the well-being of Santa Cruz County residents. We were founded in 1987 when there was some severe government budget, budget cuts, um, which threatened to close the doors of local nonprofit organizations. So 38 nonprofit leaders decided to band together and to advocate for essential human services on behalf of the tens of thousands of Santa Cruz residents relying on those services. So over the years, the Alliance has continued to serve as an outspoken advocate for those whose voices may not be heard. The collaboration, networking, and leadership development opportunities has held this group together with a common vision for 36 years. So we're here today because we want to better understand how our government budget works so we can more effectively advocate, more collaboratively participate, and guide our constituents to have voice where possible in the use of our local funds. So we appreciate your participation today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Julie. Rose, do you want to say a few words about Nonprofit Connection? Certainly. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Uh, Nonprofit Connection launched two years ago in March of 2020 in the middle of COVID. We are uh, an organization of member nonprofits of all sectors and all sizes. We ser serve as a hub for communications, resource sharing, professional development, and peer support for our member organizations. We have about 140 members. Uh, we are, we have our 501c3, so we are ourselves a nonprofit. We help direct contributions from community donors to support member nonprofits, facilitate connections with elected representatives, donors, and volunteers, and promote the collective value and essential contributions of Santa Cruz County nonprofits and the people who carry out their vital work. Um, we're very happy to be here, very happy to co-host, extremely happy to get the information that you're going to see and hope that from this presentation, you'll be able to zoom through and find the data about the county that you need, both for grant applications and just your own knowledge of how the county works. Thank you. Thanks, Rose. Okay, before we turn it over to our guest presenters from the county, we actually wanted to do a short poll just to get a sense of, have you ever done one or more of these things? So um, you should be able to select as many of these options as are applicable. So have you ever read the county's strategic plan? or explored the county's operational plan? Have you ever read the county's budget? Have you participated in a community input session about the county's strategic plan and or operational plan? Have you attended a county budget hearing or advocated for or against specific aspects of the county's budget or none of the above or something else? And if it's something else, You'll see that there's a second question below that where you can type in a short uh, text answer. So we're curious to know if you've done any of these things before. It looks like some people are only getting one choice, Nicole. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Well, then pick the one that, you, <laughs> that you've done most often or... And if you're not seeing the poll, sometimes it hides behind a window. If, if like some of us, you have multiple windows mm -hmm. open. Um, and, and feel free to just note in the chat, this is just to get a little snapshot. Yeah. Okay, we'll give it maybe another 10 seconds. See if some of you are able to find the poll on your screen. And then we'll close it and share the results. Okay, looks like 
everyone that's going to respond hopefully had had a chance to do that and so we can see um there are a number of you have read the county strategic plan that's always uh good to see and attended a county budget hearing um, but there's also a good number of you that haven't done any of the above and so we'll ask uh similar questions at the end to see if after uh participating in today's session if you're more inclined to do any of those things okay so now I'd like to introduce our speakers for today we're very pleased to introduce Marcus Pimentel the county budget manager and Sven Stafford the principal administrative analyst for the county of Santa Cruz um, who are going to give us an overview um, of the kind of the whole process how the strategic plan the operational plan the budget cycle all fit together um, they've both been working to make the budget process more transparent and accessible for all of us as community members and as part of that effort they're going to share some of the information again on the overall process um, that starts with the strategic plan and then show us a new interactive tool on the county's website so you'll have a chance to ask some questions uh, after their presentation and then we're going to uh, go into breakout rooms we'll have a chance to do some hands-on exploration um, and have smaller group discussions so we'll explain more about that when we get to that point um, but for now, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Sven. Uh, thank you, Nicole. And good morning, everyone. Um, and I think uh, Marcus is actually going to kick us off with a little introduction on uh, on budget policy and process. Uh, good morning. Um, my name is Marcus Pimentel. I'm your county budget manager. I've been in uh, working for local government uh, for almost all my career since '95. Uh, I'm honored to be here today. I've also volunteered um, quite a bit in, in local nonprofits, so I have a lot of um, um, connection and empathy with, with the world and the challenges you all have. Uh, we are honored and proud today to be here to talk to you about our new communication tool that we built into, built out of our old documents of our county budget. Uh, in the past, we would print hundreds and hundreds of documents uh, for each versions of our budget policies um, and, and recommended budget amounts. And we've, we've out of our strategic plan and operation plan, have developed a new communication device to hopefully better inform and engage everybody in our public, public. And I refer to this a lot like, can my mom understand the budget? That's the goal. Um, so we, we've developed a website that I think my mom could understand our budget. And so we're excited about sharing that with you today and getting your feedback on that. You're really our first external focus group. Um, we've launched this as a pilot program, went live in April, the end of April. Um, and we'll be really leaning harder into how to, how to release the next version in our next budget cycle. So your feedback today is critical. It's important. We appreciate you and we appreciate your feedback. And I can guarantee you, uh, you'll see a lot of that incorporated in next year's online budget. T to pull back a little bit, um, the budget is really our primary tool for any local government. It's our primary policy document and how we get things done. And what I love about what the County of Santa Cruz is you know, using that word pivot, it has changed in the last five to seven years is really focused on we need to align what we do to what our community is looking to have done. What are the needs and, and desires of all of our community and our community members? So many years ago, several years ago, we launched our first ever strategic plan. And in 2018, we went live with our five-year strategic plan, our 2018 to 2024 strategic plan. Um, it's really meant to set the vision and the, the primary goals and focus areas of where all of our county efforts should focus. Now, you know, many of you understand county budgets and many of you understand your own budgets. There's a lot of stuff that's just baked in. There's 80% of your budget that's just baked in, but there are opportunities in every budget. And so what we wanted to try to maximize is those opportunities. How can we direct those in a way that's aligned with our community vision? And so I hope you'll you'll what you'll see today is our budget is now integrated within our strategic plan and operation plan. And that's the end goal. The community should help design the strategic plan. The community should help inform what the operating plan are, the subsets of how you get things done to get the strategic plan in place. And then in the end, the budget is just how you make that happen. So 
um, we're really excited about this kind of change in, in thinking. Uh, we recognize that the way county governments and local governments have come up with developing budgets, by the time they're presented, most of it is baked in. And it's really hard to make those pivots from when the proposed budget is released to when it's adopted. So what we really, really want to get to and we're excited about that change is having the budget be a tool of how we achieve the successes in our strategic plan and operating plan. So I'll pause there and just hope that makes sense. Let that sit for a few minutes and then I'll go on with more details. So within our strategic plan, our 2018 to 2024 strategic plan, we identified six focus areas that we wanted to focus on. And, and we can talk about that in the breakout rooms a little bit more or follow-ups. Um, and within each of those focus areas, there's four main goals. Um, so there's kind of 24 total main goals for the county that we hope to achieve. And then to achieve those goals, we have operating plans. We have two-year operating plans. So we have kind of a six-year strategic plan and then two-year operating plans that help achieve those goals. For example, within our current 2021-2023 two-year operating plan, we have 180 objectives. I should have asked you a quiz. How many objectives might we have? The answer is 180. We have 180 objectives across the entire county, and you'll see some of those today. Um, they're now integrated on our budget, and you can see those actual status of those objectives. And so we're really excited about that. What we're also really excited about is the pivot that happened in 2020. One, um, coming out of certainly two emergency events, but also the, the realities of the, the, the huge systematic inequities that are in all of our systems. And so our current operating plan with 180 objectives, 80 of those are focused on areas of equity. 73 are focused on our response and resiliency out of our COVID pandemic event and our CZU fire event, just by way of example. So that's just an example of we have subset to your operating plans that are meant to be responsive to what's going on in the time. And then you have the strategic plan providing the vision and major goals of how you get there. And again, and then the budget, all of us budget geeks that are here today, we've got our budget geek team from the county. Um, you know, the budget is really how you achieve those objectives. So um, I think we're almost ready to, to go in, but what I just wanted to kind of finish with before we, we pull up the website is talk about the rhythm of our county budget process. Um, so I'll paste in the chat just so you all have it. Um, there's some key dates coming up. Uh, June 21st and June 23rd are our next key dates. It's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to have budget hearings starting at 9 a.m. in the morning, three days of budget hearings, beginning with general government, so health and human services, general government, and then our health and human services on Tuesday. And then we'll go into land use, which is public works, planning department, um, probably OR3, our, our Office of Emergency Response. Uh, that will be on Wednesday. And then we'll finish on Thursday with public safety. And that includes our, our new public defender, which we're really excited about bringing that in-house and having um, a major change in, in, in supporting and, the, and mitigating the inequities that have been in our prior system. And then we go into our district attorney, our sheriff department, some of our other major services. So that's the rhythm of what's coming next. June 28th, we'll, we'll be adopting the budget. Uh, overall, our cycle typically begins in the beginning of a, of a calendar year. And around January, we'll provide an update to our five-year forecast. In February, we'll do a mid-year status report of how our finances are going. And then from February to April, we'll be designing the budgets internally to meet our strategic operating plans. And then in April, we release the budget going into budget hearings in, um, in June. We hope to have budget hearings start a little bit earlier next year, but we have to just work on our calendar. But typically budget hearings are the second to third week of June. So that's kind of the rhythm of our budget. Um, it begins with a, a forecast in January, uh, a financial update in, in February, final recommendations from departments, presenting in the late of April, and then uh, budget hearings that uh, will start happening in June and then uh, adopting the proposed. We have a process where there's still a final adoption that occurs in September, this year on September 20th. It's the final date where we do any, any final cleanup and it's the date for auditor controller to uh, produce our financial records. Um, what we can do in the, one of the breakouts and what we'll share as a link is we have a, a one-page summary of what our of our, what our current county budget process is. So uh, Sven, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the, the website and starting us with uh, the how do I section, and if you can share your screen. 
or at least start with the. Thank you. So what you're seeing in front of you is our is our proposed 22-23 budget integrated within our strategic plan operating plan website. Um, it, it's a home landing page that you'll have kind of five option choices. Where do you, where might you want to go? You can go with the first left corner. And you can get a budget message, and that's from our CAO Carlos Palacios, who many of you know. We're, we've introduced a new technique of uh, a video messages. And so Carlos is piloting our video message first ever on our county budget. What we'll see next year is you'll have more messages from myself, from other county department heads, just giving a, a different way for us to engage our public and talking about the main initiatives of not only the county, but in the operating plan and within the departments. We have a section on what the county does. But before I jump too much deeper, Sven, if you can go into how do I use this website? This is a, a really nice tool. Uh, we designed this in-house. Um, well, we've designed the whole website in-house and Sven Stafford was the, the, the visionary in, in how we might um, display this. Um, but we created a, about a five, a little less than a five minute video. And we ask you all, please, please spend some time looking over it. It's the, a great way to just get a sense of how to navigate and be familiar with this new tool. Um, it, it tells you about the, the website, some of the, the tips and using strategies of the website. So we ask you all to, to take a peek at that um, as, as, as uh, just you know, spend the time, please <laughs> spend your five minutes during your lunch, watch it and, and share it with your friends um, and then give us feedback. You know, does, are there things missing that um, you found some barriers in how the website manages? Are there things we can do better with communicating on how to use it? Uh, so if you wouldn't mind going over into our economic outlook section, I want to talk a little bit about some of the new elements that you can find in the budget. So we have a section called our economic outlook and financial summary. This is the, the high level overview of our entire county budget. Um, yes, we have a $1 billion budget. Um, and, that, and that sounds large and it is. It's the biggest budget I've managed. Um, but most of our county operations are restricted funds or mandated services. For example, we, we're an extension of the state when it comes to healthcare and human care delivery of services. And nearly half of our budget goes to health and human. And when you fold in um, the unfortunate side of public safety and, and sheriff response and managing jails that used to be a extent, uh, more of a direct extension of the state, um, you get up to nearly two thirds of our budget is already, is already shifting into fund those critical areas. And then a lot of our budget is also include special districts and, and um, special revenues. So even though I've said a $1 billion budget, um, this is the place to get a sense of what is in that budget, but also to get a sense of what we see happening in our local economy. So if just for a quick free, if you can go into economic outlook and we'll just talk a little bit about uh, what you might find in this section. Um, we begin with just giving, uh, um, I'm pausing because I forgot to just reemphasize, one thing you'll see with this online site is we've tried to develop uh, integrated live charts wherever we can. You'll 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 touch and experience charts later in the breakout rooms that you can drill down to a different layers. So you can see a, a summary layer of here's primary information. You can drill deeper and to get a sense of what's going on in there. But within this economic outlook section, you, you get a quick snapshot of of our five year forecast and uh, should trends continue. And we're gonna we have a requirement to to achieve an adopted budget, a balanced budget. But uh, should our trends continue, we're gonna continue to have gaps in our out years. And that's factoring in our, our expectation of a little bit of an economic slowdown coming. Uh, we're not quite projecting a recession, although I think it's highly probable we'll have a recession in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, but this section further down, you, you can spend some time understanding a little bit more about um, how we achieve that that perspective, where we where we see the changes happening in consumer confidence and producer price indexes that drive that are driving the current inflation that we're seeing right now. Um, so this is a really just a snapshot that you might find interesting and useful in your own in your own operations to talk to your own board members about or talk to your own staff about. Um, and what you'll see in a lot of this is using and referring to data that you're all familiar with within Data Share Santa Cruz. Uh, wherever we can, we've tried to refer to to that side as a resource. And we're trying to connect with this online budget to existing resources that are always out that remind people of what you might find. In this case, we have 
data on our county employment or the size of our labor force and the fact that our number of labor force and number of people who are actively looking to work has been shrinking over time. So although our local unemployment rate has dropped, um, our labor force has not come back uh, to our pre-pandemic level. So that's concerning. And you're all seeing that in your, your inability to hire. Um, so uh, where else might I want to take you? If we can maybe pop over to achievements, Finn. Thank you for being the tour guide driving this bus. Um, we're, we're really proud to highlight some major achievements in this county while I can spend an hour on each of them. Well, I, you know, in addition to looking at that five minute video, maybe per going through the economic outlook to find information that will be useful to you. Um, we ask you to spend some time in our community achievements. We've tried to highlight some major successes that would not have happened without our strategic plan, a vision, and a clear charge to, to, to achieve that vision and that mission. Um, stepping in to save the Watsonville Hospital was, was a huge commitment that, that I'm not sure this county would have done 10 years or 20 years ago. Um, but in this case, they did. The county is still taking a leadership role, providing resources and $5.5 million of funding to keep the, the idea and dream of having the Watsonville Hospital remain open. Um, as you saw in an article yesterday, uh, we're still actively trying to meet a gap in, in, in finding funding for that. But what you also see in here is uh, some of our other successes in, in the, uh, the now three decade solution, working with the federal government and the state government on finally coming together with a plan to strengthen our levees to avoid the Power River flooding as it's done every, every, every couple of decades and additional achievements that we've made on affordable housing. So we, so we ask you to take a look at this, um, see does it meet your needs and we'll have a poll later on that we'll share with you from our county perspective um do these achievements resonate with you i'm doing my own little time check because i can get too carried away and too excited about all this stuff i guess what i'll finish with is uh Smith, if you can go over to the what the county does and how our taxes allocated um we'll dive a little bit deeper in a, in a breakout room but we have a new resource here available to you about if you've ever wondered um where we put, how we're fi funded or how property taxes get allocated. We've got some new great tools here for you. This infographic is a way of demonstrating that unfortunately across our county peers, across the state and our peers locally, our county is the worst funded when it comes to per capita funding at property tax and sales tax. A lot of it's a nature of uh, 1978 Prop 13 and the five decades of changes that have come there. Um, and, and just the nature of, of the changes in sales tax policy. But what it results in is we serve the greatest population, 50% of our county is served by the county. That's very atypical. Um, with, and we're the, the worst funded in the entire state as, as compared to county. So um, if we look at state averages or peers, so that's just a really, it's a, it's a game setting moment to just understand the challenges we have. So even though we have a $1 billion budget, the demand far exceeds our ability to meet. Um, and what you'll see when you dive deeper into some of these charts, like the property tax chart, is you can dive down and see not only how, how your property taxes are allocated across the county, but you can see it how it's allocated through all the different schools. Uh, most of the, your property taxes goes to funding schools, but now you're able to see which schools does your property taxes go to, general, generally speaking. So that's, a, that's an example of a lot of the data and, and, and access that you'll see across our entire website to be able to drill deeper into the information. And Sven, I, I took a lot of your time, but I'm, and I apologize for that. And I know you wanted to uh, go in a little bit more deeper about um, previewing the departments. Um, so if you want to take over from here on out. Yeah, no, happy to. Um, as, as Marcus said in this, um, what the county does section, there are a lot of resources. Um, one other that I'll just draw your all's attention to is this county services page. So as Marcus alluded to, <clears throat> we provide countywide services such as health and welfare, adult and juvenile detention, district attorney, public defender services. But for 50% of the population, we also provide what a city would normally provide. So road and bridge main, <clears throat> maintenance, park services. And we've built in a little, a nice mapping tool here so that you could, um, you know, you can look up any address, your address if you want. Um, if we wanted to type in, uh, look up Devon Court in Watsonville, we could do that. Um, if you want to look up your address and you can expand the radius so we can look for, you know, what's, what's around a mile um, around, around this address. Um, 
and then we can we can get a list of county facilities so you can look up your jurisdictional area and see that uh, it's in district two so if you wanted to see who your supervisor was we have a link that brings you to supervisor friends page uh, if you look at the county park facilities you can see that you know pinto lake park is near there and then mesa village county park is also near there um, and so you know if you wanted to see uh, in a specific area of the county, uh, what county facilities uh, in particular, you know, if there's a park within a mile of someone's house, you could do that. You can also see fire district, sanitation district. Um, there's uh, a lot of information built in here. And so the ability to just find out more about the, um, about the resources that are available to people are, are things that we wanna encourage folks to explore. Within the, you know, the department budgets are really the meat of the um, meat of the budget page and the budget website. Uh, so I'm going to explore just quickly the district attorney budget. Um, so each budget has a uh, mission statement. You can see the total expenses, total revenues. So the you know general budget information. You can see the funded staffing. Um, here is where we're really trying to link as Marcus was talking about the strategic and operational plan to the financing, to the budget. Um, so you'll see a service overview, for example, here, criminal prosecutions. And then below that, you'll see all the major work that the criminal prosecutions uh, service is tracking. Um, and so you can, they have two pages of objectives. Um, if you flip between the different divisions, so victim witness assistance and consumer protection, uh, again, you get the different objectives that align with that service. Um, by clicking into a service, you can get a description of what the service does and then some emerging issues. So what's coming up for the department and then or the service in the next year. Um, one thing you'll see here in the second bullet is uh, strengthening our law clerk program to broaden recruitment pathways and increase staff diversity. Um, if you look at the operational plan objectives, we have an objective around the recruitment process and improving diversity so that, um, you know, the DA is really trying to, um, to create a program that increases law clerk opportunities for people of color uh, to reflect the local population. And so they have that as, as an objective and this year in their budget, uh, they're adding money to fund that uh, program. Um, and so we're trying to draw these connections again between the, the funding that we give uh, to departments and then their, their major work and outcomes that they wanna see. Um, and so, again, in each, in each department, um, we have additional budget information up at the top. Uh, in budget dashboards, you can sort of get a sense for what the breakdown is of different services. So you can see for the district attorney that criminal prosecutions is actually, you know, 84% of their entire budget, whereas consumer protection is about 10% and victim witness assistance is about 6%. So you, again, you can sort of see the magnitude of what they're doing and the budget details charts. You can get a traditional line item detail. Um, and so here you can sort by the different divisions. So if you just wanted to focus on consumer protection, for example, you could filter that down, see their expenditures, their revenues, um, and then you can see down here a description, a detailed description of changes. Uh, so if we had, I think if we look at criminal prosecution and go down here um, under salaries and benefits, you'll see increase to support existing staff um, and add uh, and at the bottom paid law clerks. So you can see where we're adding funding um, for the paid law clerks uh, to support the operational plan objective. Um, finally, for each budget, we provide personnel details as well. Um, so you can see 
you know, what uh, positions we have the most of, as you'd expect in the district attorney's office. Um, it's mostly uh, it's mostly attorneys, which which isn't super surprising. Um, so you know, the idea the idea within the departments again, you can switch between departments here. So if you're more interested in what the agricultural commissioner is doing, you could you could scoot over there. Um, but the budget the, the website is designed for uh, people to be able to find you know the the thing that matters most to them uh, and then get down into as much detail as they want. Um, so we try to start again with the budget message and the economic outlook and financial summary and then uh, for broad overviews and then be able to get down uh, basically to the lowest level of the budget uh, to the object levels where um, you know we're budgeting food and computer purchases and things like that. So. Uh, so that's a brief tour, and I'll turn it back to Marcus um, before we get into our breakout rooms. Well, before Marcus uh, joins us, I just wanted to see if there were any questions for either Marcus or Sven. We have a few minutes before the breakouts. I'm not seeing any in the chat, but feel free to put a question in the chat or raise your hand. And Marcus, did you want to add anything at this point? I just want to emphasize the importance of your feedback and by way of demonstrating that um, we were meeting with um, county staff and then our elected officials and then some of their staff and quite literally a week before we went live on April 29th we got some good feedback about hey what do you think about this view and we were able to incorporate that and a week later that was built in we, we are excited about the opportunity that we've built this in-house um, using county resources and, and county skill sets. And it gives us the ability to be nimble and to really, really get your feedback um, and to have that reflected in the next budget release uh, for next year's. So please, please participate in the poll that we send out. Um, we'll share with you an email at budget, a budget uh, at uh, santacruzcounty.com email account that you can send us your comments anytime you want. But I do see a few hands that came up and I'll happily go quiet and answer questions you want to hear. Great. Thanks, Marcus. Julie, go ahead and then Claudia. Yeah, well, I just want to say it's amazing and beautiful and what an incredible amount of works. Thank you for sharing it. Um, my question is really about how will this stay updated? And it seems like it's going to be a full time job just to make sure that when I click on or in on a random you know, Tuesday, this is still going to be all updated. What, what is the plan and how confident can we feel like this is being constantly updated? Thank you. It's a phenomenal question. Did I give you that one to ask? Thank you. Um, so what we're really excited about is to compare it to what was before. Um, I've got to do this. Props, props, props. Um, you can't see it, but I'm holding four different documents in my hand that, that compiled the final adopted budget. And what we're excited about now is anytime there's a change or an amendment to the adopted budget in our cycle, um, from the proposed to budget hearings that might change it to last the when we present it on June 28th for uh, consideration, changes there, and then any final changes that might come on September 20th for adoption, they'll be reflected and updated on this website. You'll And you can track the changes that are made. So we're really excited about that feature. Um, previously, it was almost impossible to follow along any changes that were made to the initial proposed. So we're really excited about that. And then what we hope to launch with next year's um, budget is a more pro a more detailed and powerful tool that, and it's on the site now as a, as a pilot, our transparency portal that you'll be able to access and see updated tracking of what's going on um, in our county finances. But in the end, what, what, what most people care about is what's going on. Are you, are you, are you doing what you're going to say and, and how can I monitor that? And that's what we're also excited about. You'll see that in the department pages. There's a link to every uh, the operational objectives, and you'll see updates there. So there's that's the, the wonderful thing of this dynamic website is the updates will be set in place, and and then you know every year's will be kind of archived. So this 22-23 will stay as its it's a living document, and then archived, and then moved on to the next budget. So we hope to have a really clear way that you can see the evolution of our budget over time. I hope that 
answer your question, maybe over answer your question. I apologize if I went too deep. Thanks. And we're we're getting some more questions in the chat. I just wanted to say we're, we're going to transition to uh, the breakouts after Claudia's question, but we'll take the, the note of the chat questions and try to share those answers from the yep. county staff afterwards by, by email. But Claudia, go ahead. Hi, thank you. This is Claudia Abasto from um, Senior Legal C Citizen Services. Um, I have a question. So I was, it's very related to the previous one. I was kind of navigating to your website, which is really, um, it has a lot of data and I love that. But when I went to the budget and operational plan on human services and went out to veteran services, which is something that it's really important for us, I couldn't find any operational plan objectives. So that's why that my question was related to the previous one, like how updated is this information? And um, if I don't know if I'm looking wrongly. Okay. Um, Marcus or Sven, do you have a quick yeah, slide no, really. for Claudia to get there or? Um, so every, every operational plan is connected to a, every operational plan objective is connected to a service, but not every service in this iteration has a, an operational plan objective. Um, and so it could be, uh, it could be the case that in veteran services and in HSD that there are currently no, um, no objectives around that. And so, you know, that's something that we're working on for, for future iterations um, to, to really align, um, you know, the creation of objectives with, with county services. Um, so you'll, you'll see that as a, um, you know, throughout the, throughout the budget as you filter through the services, not every service has, um, has an objective. Some, some services are more administrative and supportive of other operating functions, and that's the reason. Um, and so, yeah, that's. Uh, but you're not you're not missing anything. Um, and, and so the information in here is updated. Operational plan objectives are updated twice a year. Um, and so when they're updated, that'll be reflected on this site and then on the main operational plan site as well. Okay, thank and you. I've, and I've got Thanks. a comment on this. I really appreciate that question. It was beautiful, and what I want to portray is the power of that question illustrates the power of this new tool. We've had operation plans before and I'm, not, I'm, I'm we've even found some of our county staff weren't tracking on them as well as they could have been. Now that's it, that it's integrated in our site, that could be a hole and that, that's an opportunity for a community discussion. It's an opportunity to say, why aren't there? How might we? So I, I appreciate the question and look for more of that engagement. So thank you. Okay, thanks to all of you. Um, keep the questions coming in the chat. We're tracking them. We'll share them with the county staff and get answers back to you as soon as we can. But we're gonna move on now to the breakout session so that we can all dig in here um, together in a little more detail. So before we send you to your rooms, uh, we wanna give you a little bit of sense of what's gonna happen when you get there. So we're going to randomly assign you to one of five groups um, and actually one of the groups is going to stay here in the main room so we can continue providing interpretation and recording in both English and Spanish. So that will be the group that gets to play around with the overall site navigation. Uh, and then there'll be a group focusing on what the county does on that, that section of the county's budget website. Another group will focus on the section of the website uh, related to the economic and financial summary. And then there'll be two groups uh, two breakout rooms focusing on the county departments. So when you get there, you'll see that there will be a county staff person who will lead your group through about a 20 minute exercise and discussion to explore and find particular pieces of information and then uh, lead a discussion to get your feedback about what was that like? What were, you, what were you able to find? Uh, and then there'll be someone in your group also taking notes to then do a really brief report out on some highlights when we come back um, as the full group. And so I'm going to open up the rooms in just a moment. Uh, I'm gonna make a couple little adjustments here before I do that, because I see some people are uh, having to leave. But so I will open up the rooms now. You'll have 20 minutes total in the breakouts. You'll see a countdown clock for 19 minutes, then you'll see a 
60 second warning for you're all magically sent back here. Well, welcome everyone. Do we wanna um, just go around real quick and do quick introductions so we know who all is in here? Um, so again, I'm Sven, I'm the uh, analyst in the County Administrative Office. Um, I'm here with uh, Rose Felicetti taking notes and helping facilitate this discussion. Um, but wanted to maybe go around the go around the room and just say who you are and um, what organization you're with. Um, I don't know if uh, Gisela, if you want to start. Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, I was in the Spanish channel. Um, hi, I'm Gisela. I'm part of the core team and I provide some translation and also some project uh, assistance to Nicole. Nice to meet everybody. Happy to be here. Um, I guess, do I call on somebody? Yeah, do you want to popcorn it to someone else? <laughs> okay, I'll tag Claudia. Hi, how are you? Well, again, I'm Claudia Abasto. I uh, work at the Senior Citizen Legal Services. I started recently, like three months ago, and I'm in charge of looking for grants. And um, I just learned, so this is a crazy world, and I, I really appreciate the presentation today. Thank you. It's very useful. Um, uh, oh, and I will call someone else. Um, I will call, um, Michael. Thank you, Claudia. Michael Painter. I'm the executive director of student support services at the County Office of Education. And I was very interested in, I've never been to this portal, Sven, so it's, it's amazing. And, um, I was wanting to drill down into HSA and HSD mostly, because I work very closely and have contracts with them. And so I'm, I've already tried to explore a little bit. Thanks, everybody. Excellent. Um, maybe Paulina. Hi, good morning, Paulina Moreno. I'm with a uh, Community Action Board of Santa Cruz County. Awesome. Uh, oh, should I pick someone? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Stella, no, Stella is the interpreter, right? Um, Crystal. Good morning, I'm Crystal Caballero. I'm a health educator in County Public Health and I oversee our healthy eating, active living work. And yeah, very excited to learn more. Um, thanks so much Sven and, and the team for bringing this to us. And I will call on Rose. Good morning, everyone, I'm your scribe. So if there's a point you want to make in particular that'll be reported out, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be taking general notes as people speak. I think uh, maybe Lauren was the last person that we haven't heard from. Hi, I'm Lauren. Sorry, I'm not going to turn on my camera. I'm actually working from home sick today. Um, I work for the county as well. I'm a public health nurse in um, COVID-19 vaccine specifically. So just excited to learn and see what's going on with the budget. Welcome. Um, so the first, one of the, one of the things that we, we've, tried to do also with this budget is design it with um, with mobile in mind. And so most people access the internet through their mobile devices, not through a not through a computer. And so the um, you know we've tried to uh, make it mobile friendly. So I don't know if if everyone has a phone, um, if you type into your browser the um, the URL that I just pasted in www.sccvision.us. It does. It brings up our site, and and so <clears throat> one of the things we know not everything is perfect here. If you have the site and you scroll down a little bit um, and click on the what the county does, for example, um, and then. Uh, within that, that county services, county services page that I was showing you earlier. Um, that's a good example of what, where we're trying to get to with all our pages. Um, so 
you can scroll down in the map formats to formats to your phone. Um, so you can type in, you know, type in your address, move the um, move the dial around a little to change the range of, um, of the area you're looking at. Uh, so I just encourage you all to, you know, try to look up look up your address. And if you didn't know already who your county supervisor was, try to find that out. Um, I don't know if we have, does everyone know who their county supervisor is? Thumbs up, all right. Um, so maybe we can go around and just, just say that real quick. So I'm in, I'm in district two. Uh, so Zach friend, supervisor friend is my, is my supervisor. How about um, Michael, who's your supervisor? I'm in district one, so it's district uh, Coning, Manny, Manu Coning. <laughs> nice. How about Claudia? I'm lost because I live in San Francisco, actually. So I'm like okay. trying to figure it out. Yes. Gotcha. Well. Or maybe type uh, the address of um, Senior Citizens Legal Services and see what district that's in. Yeah. Uh, how about Gisela? I too am lost, like Claudia, because I am from Texas. <laughs> oh, nice. Excellent. Um, how about uh, Paulina? Uh, District 4, uh, Supervisor Caput. Nice. Uh, how about Crystal? I'm so sorry. I'm home with my little one, and I okay, have not fine. looked at my district yet. Let me come back to that. <laughs> That's OK. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, we can, um, the one, the other, the other question we had for our group was uh, was looking at the at the transparency portal. But before we do that, I'm open to just sharing my screen again and going through any um, any additional questions that you all that you all had. Um, so we can look at it together here. Um, I know. Uh, it sounds like we have a bunch of folks from uh, are interested in slash from health and human services. Uh, the health services budget is actually one of our most um, broken down budgets. And so um, within, within behavioral health in particular, we have 11 different services um, from adult mental health all the way down to um, really public guardian. Um, and then, you know, within our different clinics, we have all our, our safety net clinics that we operate. Uh, uh, environmental health is really important in terms of land use uh, regulation. Um, so they do everything from, you know, food trucking inspections to uh, septic system inspections. Um, public health obviously plays, plays a huge role in uh, pandemic response, but also other um, population health initiatives. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know. Um, there is health is a good is a good one to look at for these budget dashboards because it does give you. It's a you know it's a two hundred twenty million dollar budget. You can see behavioral health is one hundred twenty three million of that. And then if you click into these, there's actually another level of detail where you can see. Um, that adult mental health is about 22%, substance use disorder is about 20%. So it does give you a lot more um, information and it gives you sort of a view on where, um, you know, again, look, and looking at the budget as a policy. Well, I'm gonna, Scott, I'm going to break in and tell you that Michael has his hand raised. Oh, yeah, Michael, go for it. Sorry. No, no problem. And you were actually starting to answer my question. And I feel like I glanced away for a split second, Sven, and I don't know how you got there because my question was, I already went down to children's mental health and, you know, yeah. see the total expenses and the staffing or the funded staffing. I was trying to figure out a little more detail around 
maybe the revenue side and Medi-Cal that they get and like almost a one layer deeper. And I, and I didn't get to where you're showing now. And so I feel like either my question is, is it there and, or did I just miss maybe what you're trying to show me now? Um, yeah. In the, so the, the budget piece where you drill down is here. And then on this top uh, menu here, there are budget dashboards and budget details. So within the budget dashboards, you can get into, you can basically get to this level of detail. Um, you can also see the expenses and revenues over time. So if you wanted to look at just the revenues, you could click on the revenues. And if you're interested in um, state or federal revenues, you could do that here. Um, now, if you wanted to, um, sort of cross filter that um, we can do it either in the transparency portal or in this budget details chart. So I'll spend a minute here because this, this chart is, can be pretty powerful. Um, so if we wanted to look at children's mental health, we could do that. And then, so, so now you'll see the salaries and benefits services and supplies for children's mental health. Um, I forgot that they don't have, yeah, so they budget all their revenues in administration. Okay. I mean, literally the question I was, and I can ask, obviously, yeah. my partners there, but like how much EPSDT uh, revenue do you get for billing for services and children's behavioral? Like that was my really refined question. And I thought, oh, I want to see if I can figure it out. And uh, I don't know if I can get that far enough. Um, yeah, I would imagine. How billing, but yeah. Um, I would imagine that it'd be within one of these, uh, you know, this is the Medi-Cal federal contribution. So it's budgeted okay. about $29 million for next year. Um, and then, yeah, so we'd have to, um, yeah, I mean, these are all the intergovernmental revenues. So meaning state federal revenues that we're, that we're getting. Um, so basically, well, that's, that's a very good start, and that gives me a lot more information than I have right now. So that's wonderful. <laughs> so you can see that about we get about eighty four. We're getting about eighty four million dollars in revenue next year. Um, eighty two million of that is state and federal revenue. So again, you can see you know behavioral health. We're we're basically acting as a agent of the state and federal government, uh, or as an arm of the state and federal government. And then within that, you can see, you know, the biggest source is Medi-Cal, um, followed by um, mental health, and then um, law enforcement realignment, which some of you um, will be familiar with from 2011. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, so I will, it might be worth, if we click on the transparency portal, um, there's a there are a bunch of things that we can do here that are um, that are similar to what we were looking at there. So here, if you're on here and you click on the filters, then you can basically look at anything you want. Um, so if you just want, if we wanted to look at revenues and um, and we wanted to look at uh, health and human services and health services and then behavioral health. Um, you can see most of it's in behavioral health administration, that 84 million. And now when I'm in here, you can actually click on revenue type and intergovernmental, and we could click this off. And if we just wanted to look at, um, you know, state mental health, we could do that and then we can come over here to these different charts and we can see it over time. So you can sort of see the, um, the behavioral health revenue for mental health, you know, in, for, the fa for the past five years and it'll give you that, um, that level of detail. Uh, up here, there's always a, a reset button. Um, for any of these things, you can also come up here to the top and share. You can download the um, data that's behind it, or you can, uh, you know, share the graph. Um, one thing that I thought was kind of neat to look at was um, 
if we do expenses by expense type and then we clicked into services and supplies and then clicked into food and if you look at so we have 126,000 budgeted for food but if you click on the bar graph over time you can see that this year we've estimated 4.4 million and in 2020 it was 19 million and um, that we spent on food and so I, I just put it out there um, obviously it was COVID related but you all know what the the county was doing where we would have spent 19 million dollars on food in 2020-21. And I'm happy to record all the oohs and ahs that you're feeling this is simply amazing Sam. Um, yeah, I mean, so this was this in particular was related to all the um, COVID shelters that we ran, so the the quarantine shelters and the and the hotel um, operations, um, and so uh, a lot of it'll be reimbursed by FEMA, um, but that's um, that's basically what it cost to to feed people over the last two years that had to um, be in those quarantine shelters. So somewhere between 23, 27, 27 million dollars um, just in food that we spent. Um, so anyway, uh, again, this is a, um, it's a, it's a neat tool that you can go in and again, in this transparency portal, you can drill down into, into anything, um, basically anything that you want to see uh down to the the object level for the county um so and sven we have about um maybe two minutes a little over two minutes before we'll start seeing everybody else come back to this room is there any particular feedback or questions you want to ask this group or questions to ask to get feedback from this group <laughs> um yeah i mean i guess i'll i will you can always you can always reach us. There is a, a feedback form here. We have a feedback email that's just budget at santacruzcounty.us. Um, yeah, I realize I talked way too much in this in this session. Okay, I think so. everyone is interested. And actually, can you quickly show how, like, if someone were watching this later and they wanted to view the budget in Spanish, can you show how they would do that? Yeah, so I'll start with um, Carlos's budget message has been translated. So we do have a, a transcript of that in Spanish here on the main budget message page. And then um, for the for the rest of these pages, for now, we have the Google Translate button that's available um, that uh, um, we'll provide, you know, the Google Translate version in Spanish, which is, you know, probably enough to understand, but probably not enough to be, you know, at the level that we need it to be. But uh, that is a that is an option, and that'll be, you know, something that we continue to work on. Um, so, so you can we can, um, you know, again, if there are more. Uh, more people engaging in in, in Spanish. Uh, that's that's something we want to do. We definitely want to increase the um, amount of South County participation that that goes into uh, how these funding decisions get made. I don't know if, if anyone has another another question or something else they'd like to see. I'm happy to um, to navigate over there. One thing that I'll I'll share just with um, with Nicole in the room is that we have tried to um, do more linking. Uh, community indicators similar to the core conditions of well-being um, for across our across our focus areas. So all of these um, indicators link to uh, to our data share partner um, 
And so if we look at attainable housing, we can see, you know, again, renters spending 30% or more of their household income on rent. Obviously, we know housing is, is a huge problem. And so, um, you know, by clicking on those, you can get into, into data share and see how we compare to, again, to other California counties, to the country as a whole, and get a whole bunch of um, disaggregated data. So you can see that the, that rent burden, um, you know, falls perhaps disproportionately on those who are 65 and older. Um, you know, unfortunately, the age is the only subgroup here for a lot of these. We try to find subgroups that have um, race, ethnicity, or location as a uh, as a disaggregation, so that we can see, um, you know, where the you, a lot of times the disparity falls along race lines, and um, and in Santa Cruz County in particular, uh, along location. So. Hey. Thanks, Sven. So it looks yeah. like everybody is back. And yes, people uh, automatically got moved um, back to the main room once the timer for the breakouts uh, ran out. So hopefully not too many of you were caught mid-sentence um, before the, uh, the, the shift happened. And so what we're going to do is spend about the next 10 minutes just hearing a brief uh, report out on one or two highlights from your group's discussion um, we have the notes so that, you know, if there are other things that you're not able to touch on in your report out, uh, the county staff will at least have that there. Uh, so we'll ask each of the note takers to go around and just give us a quick highlight of what was the section that your group looked at and what were some of the kind of key insights or ahas or topics that your group discussed. Um, and so Rose, you were our note taker for group one. You want to go first? Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me, sure. And I apologize, I didn't use the right form. I'll type it in. Um, one of the first things that uh, we went through is that this site is mobile friendly and you should be able to go down through it on your phone. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's adapted for that. Um, and, we and he shared the website www.secvision.us. Um, we looked at the health and human services part of the website because that interests many of you um, and did a lot of drill down on services, looking at state and federal info um, and sources and uses of funds. I was very, very impressed, frankly, with the transparency uh, function of the website, uh, particularly interesting for those of us that are writing grants and and trying to follow tracking that information. Um, Stan wanted everybody to know that there's a feedback button at the bottom of the website that you can contact them directly and leave your feedback of what you see. Uh, also, he wanted you to know that the website's available in different languages. You just have to uh, toggle the Google switch at the top. Um, Oh, I was very impressed with the community indicators. It's a dashboard. You can drill into it and see how we compare to other counties, how we compare to the U.S. in general. Um, oh, and, and clear down to how the impacts of race, ethnicity, location, that type of thing, which should provide a tremendous amount of data. And I'm just going to do the oohs and ahs that I could feel as people were trying to drill through. Thank you very much, Sten. Thanks for that, Rose. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to group two and, and Heather. You're more note taker, yeah. Wanna give us a quick highlight of what your group focused on and then some of the key points. Yeah, we, um, we loved what we learned. So great job, Lana. And we learned a lot about what the county does and how to look up um, which roads are maintained by the city or perhaps a piece of the unincorporated county, which kind of led us down this road around, you know, if you want to maybe add onto a home or if you need a builder's permit, how you can kind of lift that from the landscape and understand the districts. Um, and we also really appreciated learning about our property tax dollars and how much is going to schools. So it's more than half and you can 
have this topographical map where you can drill down and see how much of the property tax is going to the 10 school districts. Um, the, the areas that we were supposed to report back on were with regards to sales tax. So we spent some time understanding, for example, on the sales tax button, if you were to purchase, let's say, a $100 item, uh, about the total amount of sales tax around $9, um, $6 would go back to the state and $3 would stay local and about a quarter or 25 cents of that um, would go, 25 cents of that $3 that stays local would go to fund libraries. So that was really interesting. Um, we found um, the community achievement section to be extremely helpful, um, notable and user-friendly and just a lot of pride. Um, right now, shout out for the Housing for Health Project at 1500 Capitola Road. And uh, I think one area that we were in wonderment about, um, certainly looking at the districts, um, sometimes there's these up and down arrows that like allow you to drill down. And we were wondering if maybe those arrows could be more labeled. It might be helpful to let people know that um, you can keep breaking down visually the data, but overall just so blown away and so grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. Okay, let's move on to group three, and Leah is going to be our reporter for that one. Thank you. So in our group, we found that um, in California that the consumer prices have not gone up as much as many other places, which surprised me. But as we all know, the housing versus income increase is hugely disproportionate. Um, I was also surprised to find out that the county's budget is only a million dollars and only 200,000 of that is discretionary and that the rest of the county's money comes from state and feds and that that's generally fairly restrictive of what it can be used for. So that's something that I would love to learn a little bit more about. Um, and then there was a request, we looked at different ways to look at economic trends, we looked at different graphs, and there was a request that all of us individually or as groups give some feedback on that economic outlook section to see if there's any other types of information or ways that you would like that information posted, that would be helpful. And admittedly, graphs and charts are not my forte. Um, reading them, I find very difficult. So it was certainly user friendly, and there was a lot of information there. Um, for me, I think my suggestion would be that when you hit on um, the the definitions of what the different lines mean, that there's some little pullout of of um, in dummy language what that term actually means like some dummy example. So that was the only part that I found difficult uh, for myself. Thanks, Leah. Uh, okay, Julie, I think you are next, group four. Yeah, thank you. So um, David Brown helped navigate us around a little bit. We decided to focus on our treasure hunt, which was what surplus property is the county currently selling? and. What was interesting, similar to what Leah just said, was immediately we had a kind of a language question because two of us in the group were like, oh, property, right? They're, they're selling land. Um, and then when David navigated us into general services, it, didn't, it wasn't intuitive to us. Um, so we just talked a little bit about language. So we went into general services department to find our surplus property. We looked a little bit at the personnel page within general services where you can actually see what we're paying in salaries and that sort of thing, which was interesting. So the surplus that we have, we've got, for example, some keyboards for sale and some mice, mouse, computer mouses <laughs> to sell. Um, so we talked about language. Uh, it was super simple to give feedback with that little click of a button on the feedback. Um, and so we talked about maybe a glossary of terms or more explanations and, and general stores was another explanation like in the fields that I work in general stores wouldn't necessarily make sense to me so um, maybe defining the terms a little bit better and then just as we were getting pulled back, David Brody brought up a good question. Um, he mentioned that in his own explorations, he couldn't figure out how to drill down into the divisions of human services. And um, so that may be something we can follow up, follow up on. Thank you. 
Great. Thanks, Julie. Okay, and our last group report is from Nicole Lezen. Hi, our group um, was a little delayed in our treasure hunt, but that was because Eric was giving us a guided tour of how to drill down by department. That was really helpful. Um, we realized that we needed a navigator and we also learned how quickly 20 minutes goes by. So um, we, we did some exploring and we learned how to do some tasks like how to um, share information once you do find a, a a graph or chart that's useful to you if you wanted to share that with colleagues or plunk it into a report or a slide deck. Um, Eric showed us how to do that really efficiently. And we realized that some of the same things that other groups have mentioned, if you didn't know um, the terminology of what you're looking for, it might be harder to even search for it, but that's hard to anticipate. Um, so for example, we were looking for our task was to find out when the county's climate action strategy is supposed to be completed. So in order to do that, you'd, you'd have to know the name of the division and department that's currently doing that, which has changed. And so we, with again, with our, our guide, we got there and it will be, it's supposed to be completed um, late this year. So we, we finished our task, but we realized that we wouldn't have done it solo. Um, and again, same kinds of kudos, um, a lot of, great information. People wanted to spend more time exploring on their own than in the time we had today. And so I just want to reiterate um, what Sven put into the chat about mechanisms for feedback by email or on the site itself. And please feel free to add Beth, Caroline, if I missed anything, or Eric. And I see some of you are posting additional um, questions in the chat. If any of you have other questions that either you didn't get to ask in your breakouts or you didn't hear addressed in the report outs, use the chat to post those because that'll be a great way for us to keep track or for the county to keep track of what else people are interested in, including whether um, the county staff would be willing to do similar presentations like this. Um, so feel free to use the chat. And um, we actually have a little poll that we're going to launch just to see what you are interested in doing or what you think you'll do after participating in today's session. So I'll launch that in a moment, but I just saw someone else, um, I think Julie, that, that your group also got a suggestion for a search function for specific terms. I'm thinking before we launch the poll and start our wrap up, Sven or Marcus, would one of you be willing to just demo that for us? really briefly, because I think that could be really useful to for the group to see and to have it on the recording as well. Yeah, I can um, I can share my screen again real quick. Uh, I appreciate the feedback. I think in particular, the reminders about plain language are important. Um, and that's something that we need to we need to strive for. Um, in terms of it's it's not exactly the rollover, but we do have a glossary here in the in the user guide and glossary um, where you can find all the different um, budget language pieces defined. So if you click on um, you know adopted budget, you can it'll it'll unwind a, a definition for you. Um, so there is that in terms of glossary, but again, the, the point is taken in terms of um, plain language, and uh, and then in terms of uh, in terms of search function in particular for our operational plan, which is up here. I will say that um, that that if you just go to the operational plan, you can search objectives. So you can search sort of keywords if you just wanted to search for climate. Uh, for example, um, you could find our, our climate action strategy here. Um, and so that function is available and, and then um, getting it to the budget website in the next iteration, I think would be a, a, a good idea. Great, that was helpful to see. Okay, I'm gonna launch our um, poll to get a sense of what do you think you'll do now after having seen this presentation and getting to play around with the site a little bit? This question I just, I checked during the breakouts. You can answer this one <laughs> more than once. 
do you now plan to read the county strategic plan or explore the operational plan or, or the proposed budget? Do you think you'll participate in a future input session about the county strategic and or operational plan or attend a county budget hearing and advocate for or against specific aspects of the budget? Do you think that you'll share information you learned today with others um, or invite county staff to present this information for a group or agency you work with? Or do you think none of the above or something else? And we'll give you a moment to answer that before we close and share the results. Oop, looks like it might already be closed. Okay. So we see that um, several of you that responded are planning to look further into the operational plan and the budget tool. Um, and several of you are also thinking about participating in future input sessions, attending county budget hearings, advocating and sharing information with others you learned today. These are all great to see. Okay. Um, so we will, uh, got a couple more things to do with all of you today. Gisela has posted the link in the chat. The county staff would love to have you fill out a survey um, that they're managing to provide some additional feedback about today, about today's session. Um, we'll also launch our Zoom feedback poll. Um, we'll do that next. And then also if we have a couple upcoming uh, core events that we're hosting or co-hosting along with other partners. Um, so both of them are happening on Tuesday the 31st and uh, one's in the daytime, our usual kind of core coffee chat time where we'll do a joint kind of training or workshop or conversation on harnessing local data to create the core conditions for health and well-being. And we'll actually I get to take a deeper look at the data share site that uh, Sven was showing us in group one. So there's still time to register for that one. And then later that evening, we're co-hosting a town hall with First Five Santa Cruz and the County Office of Education and the Child Development Resource Center on pre-kindergarten for kids. So it's there's a lot of change ha changes happening in the early care and education, transitional kindergarten world. And so this town hall is really geared towards families to help them understand what those changes are and what their options are, but uh, you're also interested if you're uh, interested in that topic. And uh, David, I, David Brown, I see your hand up. Did you want to ask something or add something? I just wanted to say if there's time at the end here, uh, we had a question in our group about not being able to find divisions too easily in the human services department. And I know that this is an organ, this is a group that's very interested in what happens in the human services department. So I thought we maybe could respond to that a little bit if you have time. Yes, that would be great. Go ahead. Oh, but, um, okay. Mm -hmm. So the question came up uh, when uh, someone was looking at the human services department and they looked at the divisions, they don't see the divisions broken out in the way that we actually do operations in human services. For instance, it doesn't jump out as the employment and benefits services division, or it doesn't look at like adult and long-term care. And what we have here is that we've got a historical issue that we're working towards changing. Um, we have it broken down into the budget categories that they've always been in by these budget indexes. So most of these divisions, you'll see them in the social services division on the website. And I think, and I, I'm going to defer to Marcus and Sven, but I think that we were in conversations with human services about trying to make the, align the budget to the actual operational divisions uh, more clear for next year, but it's a lot to unravel as far as their state allocations go. And so it's a lot of movement on the back end to try to make that reflect. Um, Sven and Marcus, I don't know if there's more you want to add to that. No, that's that's spot on, David. It's, it's some of it's a system of bureaucracy. Um, human services is funded directly through state and fed funding sources through a large claim. And to maximize our federal dollars coming to our community, they've designed their budget in a way to, to make it efficient to submit their claim. But it, it makes it hard to disaggregate. So we're working on them with that, and we feel we'll have a plan in place for next year's cycle. 
but we also want to still maximize making sure our federal dollars stay in this community. But that's a great observation and it's all good feedback. And I think one of the things, just as what you know we'll do is, uh, we've seen a lot of good comments, a lot of good questions in the chat. I'll take this opportunity to say we'll get to those. Um, maybe we'll just respond as a, a single document and have it shared back out to the group or we'll work with uh, the Nicoles in this group on how best to communicate that. Thanks, Marcus. And I think I saw Rose, did you have your hand raised? Yeah, I have a question <clears throat> to Marcus and Jen. Are there particular times of the year that you really do want a lot of feedback? And will you be hosting like an in-person session? Would you be doing this online? How can we get the information out to the broadest audience that you would like some information about a particular thing, a particular time, a particular topic, et cetera? I think the, the next best opportunity is those budget hearing dates, June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And I pasted in the chat the key dates that are of our Board of Supervisor meetings. Um, so you'll see all those key dates that are there um, throughout the rest of this year. Uh, August 23rd is also another important date. That's when we do an update to our operation plan. It's not really changing, but it's a good opportunity to learn what, what's been going on in the last six months and our, everything we've said we're going to do. So I, th I think those budget hearings, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and August 23rd are great opportunities to provide feedback um, to our, our, what we're doing as far as budget policy and what the status of our operation plan are those meeting the marks. And then in general, I think we've, we've talked about staying in tune, especially whenever you hear us coming up on an update or a refresh or designing or creating our next operation plan or the update to our strategic plan. You know, we, again, really want that to drive the budget policy decisions in the out years. Um, so that's, that's the best way to really pivot this large, this large county operation is what is our long-term vision? What are our two-year operating plans? Right. Thanks. I just want to say thank you again to Marcus and Sven and the whole county team for being here today. And this was great information to have and nice chance to, you know, get in there and, and explore and play around with it more. And it's encouraging to see that um, several people are thinking of going back and doing more of their own exploration and that there's more interest in, in really digging deep into it. So Thank you everyone uh, for uh, staying with us till the very end. Uh, we'll stay on just a couple of minutes more if any of you have any final lingering questions that you wanna post in the chat so that we capture those. And uh, and Marcus, yes, we can work with your team to compile all those or have you compile them and we'll share them out when we send uh, the follow-up video links and all of that. So I think that's it for today. We hope to see several of you again on Tuesday or at a future Core Institute event. Thanks everyone.